Tonight on Hunter. Did you bust a guy named Frank Lasseter a couple years ago, one of those Aryan Legion creeps? Lasseter? Yeah, he's doing life in Fenwick. Not anymore, isn't he? <sighs> Love LA. I still got contacts out there. Let me hit the streets and see what I can do. You don't go seem to get it, do you, Andy? You don't seem to leave well enough alone. Now, when a good cop offers you help, you damn well better take it. But you're not a cop anymore, Andy. Well, I have an idea he's up to something awfully big. Get the money! Freeze, police! Looking good. Real good, Frank. What's today, a special occasion? Is it every day? We'll celebrate out in the yard with everyone else. Come on. Hey, no congregation. What'd you say, boy? You heard me, thanks. Why don't you chill out, Washington? The brothers here, they're just trying to take up a little collection, send you on a vacation. Oh, yeah? Where am I going, Lassiter? To hell. Don't worry. You'll enjoy it. I've been there. Oh, my God. We have a down guard. We have a down guard now. Light up against you, Batman. Operate the guard. This your last warning. Everybody light up against you, Batman. You want to tell me why, Frank? What can I tell you? Move it. Some people love a parade. I love an arraignment. Get that slime out of here. Did she get the flowers? about flowers. You're a creep. You sent Washington's widow a dozen dead roses. Feeling, buddy. Let's go. Love LA.
Can I help you, sir? Oh, uh, I want to see Sergeant McCall. Well, she's not at her desk. Can I take a message? Oh, no, thanks. Right. Uh, those booking forms were a lot simpler in my day. Andy Polanski, I'm a friend of Dee Dee's. We met a few years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, at a retirement party. Yeah, that's how you doing. Fine. Hey, Andy. Dee Dee! Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> how long are you in town for? Uh, well, actually, I'm here to stay. What do you mean to stay? What about your, your daughter up in Seattle, those terrific grandkids? Well, they're still terrific, but actually, I got a job offer I couldn't refuse. Get this. Head of security for some classic computer firm out in the valley. That's not too bad for a retired street cop. I think that's great. Check it out. There's still hope for us. Apparently so. Uh, could we have lunch? We got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. See, Andy. Honor! Did you bust a guy named Frank Lasseter a couple years ago, one of those Aryan Legion creeps? Lasseter? Yeah, he's doing life in Fenwick. Not anymore, he isn't. I tell you, the guy was so big. Well, call! He ended up calling him, sir. <laughs> Hate to spoil your reunion, but we got a bad one over on Hope Street. What's going on? We got a homicide. Come on, I'll explain to you on the way. Andy? I know the drill. We'll get together later. Uh, well, uh, where can I find oh, you? Oh, I took a place in West Hollywood. I'll leave the address and phone number on your desk. Okay. Uh so good to see you. You're still my old blind bear, you know. You're awfully quiet today. I was just thinking about it, Andy. I'm very surprised to see him down here. You know, in his letters he said his life in Seattle was so terrific. Maybe he couldn't pass up a good job opportunity. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, what was that thing you, uh, you called him, uh, the old brown bear? What was that? <laughs> no, no. Not the old brown bear, the old blind bear. Oh. <laughs> it's a long story. See, back after I graduated from the academy, Andy was my T.O. And I thought this guy's just an over-the-hill cop, you know. Turns out he really taught me the streets. Anyway, one day we're sitting there and he says to me, he says, you have to think of me as the old blind bear. I am all alone in the woods with nothing but my foul breath to keep me comfort. I am too mean to die. I'm too old to care. But it shows some concern because I'm still the bear. And was he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Guy's the best street cop I ever knew. Present company excluded, of course. Yes. Glad you qualified that. <laughs> Thank you. Hunter, all I could get from these witnesses inside the building were just vague descriptions. Not one of them remember seeing a tattoo on anybody. Sure, they covered him up. One William, one thing was absolutely brutal. Yeah. Well executed. That's Lasseter's style, all right. Great. Now we got a sociopath with a brain. William, five, six, go. What's the situation down there, Hunter? A lot of automatic weapon fire, Charlie. Two dead. Very well planned out. Well, I guess that puts the killing of the guard into perspective, doesn't it? It sure does. I'm headed out to the state penitentiary to see what I can find out. Look, I'll, uh, I'll have our intelligence people do a rundown on all the areas that are still left on the streets. Yeah, that's a real good idea. Also, Lasseter's got a real crazy brother at Joliet State Penitentiary. Why don't you contact the prison officials and see what they can dig out of them? Check it out. Out. No, it's my fault. I should have known that Washington's murder was a setup for Lasseter's escape. Well, it looked like just another racial killing. You can't blame yourself. Uh, you've got to understand, Lasseter and his boys have assaulted black guards before. But Lasseter's never actually done the dirty work himself, has he? No, and that should have been the tip-off. Have you talked to his boys yet? Oh, please, it's like talking to cement. I mean, if I put them all in Iraq, none of them would open up. The fact is, wherever he is, inside or out, Lassiter still runs the Legion, and he runs it with an iron fist. I know. I put him in here. Well, I don't have to tell you. You're dealing with a lunatic. Then I don't have to tell you guys how tough it's going to be to put him back in here.
We checked on Frank Lasseter's brother at Joliet. He was paroled last month, but he jumped parole two days ago. Probably on his way out here to see his brother. And he's certifiable. Yo! Company! straight through, man. 48 hours without a single break. Except for a little entertainment on the way, right? Uh, picked him up in a little curio shop outside of Albuquerque. The blonde's for you. The other one's for me. Whoa, We're gonna have... Whoa, 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 whoa. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> business, business first. <laughs> you look great. You look great. I look lousy. A little fun like a five million dollar score would help me. Five million bucks? I can't believe that. Where did a deal like this come from? Someone just dropped it in my lap. <laughs> Captain, I want you to meet my little brother, Rudy. He's crazy as Frank says. Crazier. So I round the corner, and what do I see? There you are, hanging onto the perp's belt while he's trying to climb a chain-link fence, and your little feet are dangling six inches off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's how funny you look. <laughs> Did you ever tell Hunter about that one? No, and you better not either. <laughs> oh, we had some great times. Oh, yeah. So this Hunter's a pretty good partner, though, huh? He's very good. Hey, tell me about this new job you got, Mr. Chief of Security. Oh, it's no big thing. I just, uh, I sit around telling a bunch of stuffed shirts how to guard their computer secrets. But, you know, I'd give it all up for just one more year in harness chasing the bad guys. Well, tell me about this case that you and Hunter got yesterday. Two deputy sheriffs were gunned down uh, transferring a convict over to court for an arraignment. Yeah, Frank Lasseter. I read about it. You come up with anything? Not yet. You know, I busted a few of those white supremacist racists a few years ago. I still got all my old files. I bet you I could come up with something. It's really not necessary. Well, I just thought I could help. Oh, uh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. It's, well, it's just it's my job now, you know? Yeah. Speaking of, I'm late for a briefing session. I gotta go. Talk to you later, okay? Bye. According to our latest intelligence, there are 21 Aryans on the streets of California. Most of them prefer San Francisco. These nine losers are ours. Now, you've all been given a packet containing their photographs, rap sheets, and information of their last whereabouts. Where to find them, and bring them in for questioning. Captain? Look, these guys are extremely dangerous and armed to the teeth. If you run into them, make sure you have plenty of backup. Any questions? Good luck. Lou? We're dealing with white supremacists here. Don't forget the duck. Just another case, Hunter. No problem. Sorry I'm late. Don't tell me. The brown bear, right? <laughs> Blind bear. Listen, I got a... Uh, Address on Frank Lasseter's ex-wife, Rita. It's a long shot. Check it out and see what happens. Will do. Look, uh, Sergeant McCall, I haven't seen Frankie in more than seven years, and I really don't want to. Can you prove that? Why should I have to? I have a whole new life now. I have a good job, a decent place to live. You were married to the guy. And I'm still paying for it. I met that animal when I was 17. It's nothing but a runaway work in the streets with no one who gave a damn. Along comes Frankie, gives me lots of love, and I thought I had it made. 
He also gave me this. It's because he didn't like the Christmas present I got him. I'm sorry. You don't know what sorry is, lady. If you do hear from him, would you give me a call? I own a gun now. If that man walks through that door, I'll blow his head off. Then I'll call you. Yeah. I tell you, Mr. Thomas, this little baby is a special. It comes with my personal guarantee. Dennis, there's a call for you, line two. Excuse me. I tell you what, your kid has any problems with his car? I'll come over the house, I'll fix it myself. Sweeney. Dennis, a cop was here asking about Frank and Rudy. This cop didn't ask about me, did he? No. No, but I'm worried. Rita, relax. In a few days, you, lover boy, all of us are going to be rich. Kiyama car leaves the office about 12 noon. Figure approximately 25 minutes to reach the interstate bank. Now, that's on 12th Street. Takes about five minutes to load the money. Five million bucks. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. May I go on? Do stop and you. Now, Masters will ride at the inside man. When your boys stop the car, he'll take out the other guard and then open the doors. When are we going to meet this Masters guy? He's here. I just want to give him a big $5 million kiss. Sorry I'm late. What the hell is going on? What do you mean, Rudy? <laughs> what do I mean? Look at him! Didn't you tell him this? I, I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is funny. Hey, neither do I, boy. Call it! I ain't working with a spade! You watch your mouth! Hey, boy, I cut a dozen of you guys up in a joint. Let's make it a baker's oh, dozen. Rudy! Ah, Rudy! Ah, watch, Rudy! I want to talk to you. Come over here. Come over here, listen to me. Rudy, Rudy, I want you to listen to me. Now, I want you to take a look. A real close look. You see that boy over there? He ain't black. He's green. He's green, Rudy. Five million dollars worth of green. Do you understand? Do you? Good. Okay. Now I want you to go outside. Come on, come on. Come on. Cool. Relax. Take a little target practice. Look, uh, Masters, and I'm sorry about that. You know, your brother needs help. Don't say that about him. He's my brother, and he's worth more than five million dollars to me. You got it. Just continue talking about getting rich, all right? Hutter. Hey. Prison records show that Rita didn't visit last year when he was up in Fenwick. I left a copy of it over on your desk. Well, you think she's straight? I don't know. All I know is she's got a good sales job, good references, she pays her rent on time, and neighbors say they see her every once in a while with a guy in uh, his 30s good looking. Mm -hmm. Tattoos on him? Uh, no. Is that for me? <laughs> no, it's not for you. It's for Andy. It's a housewarming gift. Well, you know, you should buy me one of those. I like to have one of those. I did buy you one of these. You let it die.
Now, what's wrong with Andy being a security guard? It's a very reputable job. Uh, that's not the point. What is? Man has always been straight with me. He always has, and this time it just doesn't add up. He's always telling me how great his life is up there with his daughter and his grandkids. Why would he leave all of that to come down here? You better talk to him about it. BD! Hi, Andy. Hey, Andy, what are you doing here? Hey, I'm the boss. I took the day off. Listen, I was going through my files, and I ran across a perp who used to run with the Aryans. Who's that? His punk's name is Dennis Sweeney. When he isn't doing armed robbery, he's selling cars. That's his picture. Does he have any tattoos? I don't remember him having any. Well, these guys like tattoos, Andy. Well, if it was up to me, I'd check it out. We've got an awful lot of things to check out. Well, it couldn't hurt. Yeah, well, I'll just put it on the pile of stuff to look at. Excuse me. Andy, could we get together later? Oh, yeah, sure. I got some things to do. I'll give you a call. No, wait. Are you telling me that with all the detectives we have on this case, nobody's come up with anything? That's right, Captain. That doesn't make any sense. Knowing Lasseter the way I do, I have an idea he's up to something awfully big. Oh, that's all we need. I may have a lead. I couldn't resist checking in on that information on Sweeney. Who is Sweeney? Andy Polanski, a retired police officer friend of McCall's, tipped us to the guy. Apparently, Sweeney was up in San Quentin for about 11 years, and that's at exactly the same time that Frank Lasseter was there. Yeah, but that doesn't put Sweeney in the Legion. Well, no, that's true, but uh, San Francisco PD Intelligence says that they've got a new wrinkle on these guys. They call them sleepers. Apparently, they recruit them in prison, but they don't tattoo them. That way, they use them on the outside. I think we ought to talk to this guy, Sweeney. Good. He's at Best Deal Used Cars in the Valley. How you doing, Dennis? Remember me? Polanski. And here I was thinking you were dead. Say, uh, you interested in that sleek baby? Mike, Mike, Mike. Blue? Used to be your favorite color. Still is. What I'm interested in is something a lot uglier. Frank Lasseter. Never heard of him. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I should have had him. Give me the gun, Andy. I'm sorry, guys. I know the guy was wrong. He just didn't think that we were taking him seriously. And that gives the guy the right to come out of retirement? What's this guy want me to do, give him a reward? Well, what do you want to do, lock him up? The guy blew our okay. only lead. And it's a lead we wouldn't have if it hadn't been for him. Would you two back off just a second? Yeah. We don't know that Sweeney would have ever led us to Lassiter, do we? We do now. That was ballistics. The bullets from Sweeney's gun matched two of the slugs that were one of the murder deputy's bodies. Look, there's no point in keeping Polanski here. Send him home. Thanks, Charlie. Andy, we have to talk. Oh, sure, kiddo. I'm really sorry about what happened. It was a dumb move. Well, there's an understatement for you. Well, let me make it up to you. I still got contacts out there. Let me hit the streets and see what I can do. You don't up. seem to get it, do you, Andy? You don't seem to leave well enough alone. Now, you listen, Hunter. I was working the streets when you were still in knee pants. Now, when a good cop offers you help, you damn well better take it. But you're not a cop anymore, Andy. You're a security guard. I saw you going to work last night. Andy? Andy, what's going on with you? Nothing. Nothing? Come on, there has to be. That's why you came down to L.A., isn't it? Come on, let's talk. I'm your friend. Let's go talk. When I retired and moved to Seattle, I thought it'd be great. I'd be with my daughter and her kids. 
They're really good kids. But in your letters, you said that you were having a terrific time. Yeah. I said a lot of things. Dee Dee, my daughter didn't want me there. What? What do you mean? I can't believe that. Oh, it's true. Look, I don't blame her. She just never was able to forgive me. Andy, forgive you for what? Well, I don't have to tell you what a cop's personal life is like. The job destroys it. First it cost me my marriage, then my kids when my wife moved to Seattle. But I, I tried to keep in touch. I really did, but you know how it is. My daughter hardly knew me. So why did you go back initially? I thought I could make it up to her, make it right with us. Have you got any idea what it's like to live with people that you hope will love you and, and you realize that you're, you're just being tolerated? I always felt alone up there. So I came back. I was never alone here. I had the force, I had other cops. I had you. Andy, you still have me. Yeah, I know that. Well, I gotta go to work. You gonna be all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Still the old blind bear, right? Yeah. I want to thank you, Ray, for you being flexible. It's really no problem. Come in. Want to see me, Chief? Hey, Ray. Masters, Ray's going to take over your spot on car five. I want you to move into car three. But, Chief, I'm senior on that button. I know, but I need your experience in car three. But, Chief, listen, Look, I, I don't want to argue about it. That's the way it's going to be, okay? Sorry, Chief. Hey, hey, take it easy, take it easy. Take my wallet, okay? Don't hurt me, okay? <laughs> Andy, Andy, Andy! It's been a long time, buddy. Wow. What are you, you scared me, Andy. <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought, I, th I thought you were in Seattle. I thought you retired, Andy. Well, I was. I just need some information on some of your clients. I don't have any more clients. I left that business a long time ago. My hands started shaking a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And those bums, they didn't trust me to paint them anymore. But they're wrong. Hands don't shake that much, right? Am I you right? are still a great artist, buddy. I need Thanks. some help. You want me to give you a, a, a tattoo? <laughs> no, no. I want you to help me locate Frank Lassiter. What, are you crazy, Andy? You don't mess with those people. It's not for me, it's for a friend. Lassiter and his pals are planning something big, and I gotta know what's going on. I'm out of touch with those people now, Andy. I don't see them anymore. Give it a try. For old times' sake, huh? Just hold on! Now, Frank, will you just listen to me? Now, we are gonna have to take down car number three. Oh, yeah? How much? About a mil and a half, if you hit it at the end of the run. Not good enough, murder. That's chump change. Well, Frank, that is the best we can do. That's second best! And that's not good enough for me! There's gotta be another way! Hey, Mr. Ahmed Carman, why don't you and I have a little talk? There you go. Have a nice night. Hey, Lee! Hi, Ray! How's the kid working out, Larry? He works real hard. Thanks for sending him over. Card to Kings. Uh, Kings, huh? Lee, check the stock room, see if you can find a card to Kings. Sure. Ray, I wish you would stop smoking. It's got a point. Everybody, stop and turn around! 
Don't don't get excited. Just take what you want. Thanks. Oh, man, you run a lousy business. There's less than 200 bucks here. You better have more money to till next time. Oh, uh, too bad there ain't gonna be a next time. Hi, Lou. You sure the boy saw the tattoo? Mm-hmm. The kid studies German in school. It said Wise Mark. It means white power. It's pronounced Weiss or Mark. Yeah, whatever. Listen, um, go easy with the kid. One of the victims was a guy named Austin. He um, brought the kid and his family over here from Vietnam. Hello, son. I'm Sergeant Hunter. What's your name? Lee. Lee? Listen, I know this may not be the time to ask you, but do you think you might be able to help us out? Look at some photographs. Thank you. If you recognize any of these men, just speak to them. Him. He yes? shot Ray. He shot Ray. Yes. You're sure about that? Yes. Thank you, Lee, very much. Now, this officer is going to help you get home, okay? Thank you. I mean, this doesn't make sense. But these guys, they don't do this for a couple hundred bucks. You sure don't, Lee. Hey, I did a backgrounder on Dennis Sweeney. Seems he's from Texas. I'm having him checked out. Fine. How's Andy doing? I don't really want to talk about it. Don't you ever go home. Yeah, it's me, Andy. Hi. Listen, I talked to some of my old clients, and they haven't seen anything in Las Vegas people. You sure? Yeah. But I'll tell you something. I learned something I never knew before. Remember a guy named Dennis Sweeney? I think you busted him once. Right, that's the guy. You know who his half-sister was? Las Vegas ex-wife. Oh, uh, did you get an address on her? Yeah, I do have an address. Yeah, in Silma. It's 24321 Angel Heights. Thanks, pal. Homicide, Sergeant McCall's desk, Sergeant Hunter speaking. Hello? Hunter, that backgrounder from Texas on Dennis Sweeney came in. The only family to speak of is a half-sister Rita. Oh, Leslie. Very nice work. Thank you very much. Right there. 
Well, you just never give up, do you, old man? We're gonna keep this real simple. You're gonna tell me where Frank Lasseter is, or... Dennis? What's going on here? Go back in the house, lady. Go! Oh, oh my God! Blanche! Dennis? Dennis? Give me no choice. Shut up! Oh, Dennis, please. Okay. Yeah. Great way to end a career, isn't it? Andy, you had a terrific career. It ended three years ago. Yeah, right. Andy? You think it's easy? One day you're out working the streets, commanding respect. The next day you're just out there. Andy, I understand that, but you've got to let it go now. Where do you see what it's like? Walking down Figueroa. You spot some guy that's dirty, and you can't do anything about it. Now, that hurts. Andy, why don't you go back up to Seattle? Look, you got family up there. Don't you try to make it work? Yeah, I guess you're right. I got to go. Andy. D, don't end up like me. I've spent three hours with Rita Lasseter. She swears she doesn't know where Frank is. Well, we cannot hold her. Look, get somebody on her. Charlie, what's going to happen with Andy Polanski? Well, I, I don't think the DA is going to be too hard on him. I'm very sorry about Andy. I'm sorry, too. Not a lot of things. What are you doing? You guys said it's been running rough lately. I'm just pumping the fuel pump a little bit. It should be fine now. Man, I can't help thinking about Ray. Yeah, me too. I feel weird going out like this. Yeah. Let's roll. Hunter, here's that paperwork on the convenience store shooting you wanted. Oh, yeah, right. Say, how's that boy doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nail those pigs, I'm sure he'll feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, McCall. I got a big time lead. Let's go. Let me, uh, let me call Andy. I'm worried about him. The victim at the convenience store was an armored car driver. Forget about Andy. Let's move it. We got a job to do. Yeah, how are you? Okay. See you next time. Who took Ray Austin's place on the rock? I put our John Masters back on it. What do you mean you put him back on it? What's the next pickup? Five million dollars, Golden West Bank. It's not ringing, something's wrong. Call the bank. It's too late, they would have left there five minutes ago. Now, can you give me a copy of the route? You bet.
All right, Rudy, finish it up. Hey, boy, you take care of your pal. That's your department. Rudy, let's go! My brother's wrong. I ain't colorblind. You ain't green. Get black. I'm gonna go call an ambulance. Oh, how is Rudy Lassiter? Bad. Surgeon said it could be ours. Mm. I'll tell you, he better live. The feds are going to be all over us in a few minutes. And he's our only link to Frank and that five million bucks. Captain, I have to go take care of something. I'll be back. Something wrong? I'll be back. Hospital call. Rudy Lasseter's coming out of surgery. Let's go. You're kidding. Let's get over there. Hey, McCall. Rudy Lasseter just woke up. We're going to the hospital. Come on. Andy killed himself tonight. What? What'd you say? You know, all he had in his life was a job. Family didn't care about him. All he had was being a cop. When that was over, he had nothing. He had you. He didn't. Not really. You know, today I had a feeling that I had to talk to him. And I went over the phone to call him. And I was picking up the phone to talk to him, and that's when you came in. You remember what you said to me? You said, talk to him later, because you have a job to do. That's right. You remember you said that? You said, you have a job to do. You know what I realized? All I have in my life is this job. I am not going to end up like Andy. This job can go to hell.